five. And uh, we're going to be moving on from there. Uh, let's pray before we get started. Father, we bless you. We exalt you. We magnify you, Lord. You're just so awesome in so many ways. And we don't even know how awesome you are. You're just so wonderful. You've made incredible provision for us, Father. And we've been so blind to it for so long. But by your grace and mercy, we ask, open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our heart to believe. We fully yield, let, and permit you, Holy Ghost of God, to do within us this day and every day that which is your desire to do, we yield to that now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, it's incredible what the Spirit of God has been doing. We've been looking at some of the ways that biblically uh, God used to kind of give us an idea of who the Holy Spirit is, who the Holy Ghost is, because... Without him revealing it, we have no way of knowing it. But in the revelation, we have to understand that we're not just talking about some energy or force that is far off somewhere. We're talking about the operational, functional, authoritative power of God who's inside of us. And somehow, by the grace of God, we're going to tap into it like we've never tapped into it before. Amen. It's just so awesome when you look and see what his potential is, and then you realize he says, hey, as I am. I, I mean, are you kidding me? I, I mean, it, it's hard to speak. It's humbling to, to speak about somebody that's so awesome when you feel like you know so little compared to what is still yet to be revealed. But we press on. Amen. We push on to know more and more as we should know. And we looked at the dove, I think, the last time we were looking at uh, some of the uh, attributes, the characteristics, some of the things that are symbolized in Scripture about the Holy Ghost. And we're going to start out today looking at fire. Uh, fire is used as several different things in the Bible. We're going to, by the grace of God, press through and get some of this stuff done, but I want to pause every time the Spirit of God wants to pause and elaborate on some things. Um, could I get somebody to turn this light out right here? I think it'd be easier to see. One of the things that fire symbolizes, of course, is the presence of the Lord. And uh, I, I can't think of anybody that's just ready to run and jump and leap in some fire that's in their right mind, but yet our God is fire, yes. and he wants us to come to him where he is. Now, the only way he knows that we can survive in being where he is is he knows that as he is, so are we, that just as he is fire, we are fire. fire. Hallelujah. That fire joins with fire. Uh, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 2, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. Now we know that was when Moses was, was doing his thing and getting set up to be utilized by God. And, and God appeared to him that way. Uh, also in Zechariah 2, 5, for I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. Amen. So now it's not just a fire, but a wall of fire. That God's uh, clearly indicating that his manifest presence is that fire. Now we know what fire does. Fire can consume things, but fire can purify things. There's a whole different function of things that can happen with fire. But we want to solidify once and for all that really God uh, indicates very clearly that he is not only a fire, but a wall of fire and a consuming fire. Amen. In Exodus 19, 18, Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. 
and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. Incredible. You think about that. It'd be like, Lord, we want your presence here. And all of a sudden, the building starts shaking. The parking lot flies apart. The doors fly <laughs> off. It's hinges. And, and then Hallelujah. by the time he shows up and the manifest presence is here and people see the fire descending, they're going to think it's a hailstone or something. And they're going to be in the parking lot and be gone. Then the rest of us that stay will have church. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> But that's the thing that the Holy Ghost of God does in our life is he brings peace when we see that fire. He, he puts a desire. He puts a desire in us to just run into that flame. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. To where that fire is our friend. Yes. Now, in the natural, it don't work that way. In the natural, even, when, when those things was happening with Moses, they flew away. They, they were out there. We're gone. We ain't going up there. You go up there, Clyde. I mean, Moses. <laughs> you go up there and see what he's got going on and come back and tell us about it. Well, that's, that's probably the best thing they could have done at the time, although that's not what God wanted, because if they would have went up, they probably would have been consumed. But the thing about it is, is that that very being and the manifest of that fire and the cloud and the wall of fire is all abiding within us. Amen. It's there. Do you have something that needs burned up? Good news. Amen. Let the fire roll. Hallelujah. <laughs> If your enemy's approaching you, show him the fire. Don't show him your attitude. He can give a rip. He don't care if you cuss him up. He wants you to cuss him up one side and down the other. He wants you to be afraid and run and get on the phone, call anybody you can to try to come and help. What he doesn't want you to do is to turn the flame on. Amen. My suggestion is turn the flame on. Be that fire that God has, has made you to be. Amen? So the Holy Ghost has seen uh, so many different ways, so many different places about the fire. Exodus 24, 17, the sign of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. Amen? A devouring fire. It's like a fire just eating stuff up, just chewing, just destroying, and, and even causing the earth to shake and quake and smoke. Amen? Amen? You're capable of that. Potentially, if God inside of you wanted to do that, he wouldn't have to go anywhere else to do it. You are full enough resource of his presence for those things to be manifested any way he wants to manifest. Amen? Hallelujah. If you remember the disciples when, when they got upset with the the guy that was giving them a little bit of rub, they said, Lord, you want us to call fire down from heaven and take your suit out? No, I'm paraphrasing. And Jesus said, whoa, easy. You, you don't know what spirit you're of. We're, we're not here to wipe them off the face of the earth. We're here to convert them, to purify them, to show them a light. Be the light. Don't be the devouring fire on them. But let that light turn up so bright the enemy don't want to come to it. Amen. So the same thing here, and in, in the eyes of the children of Israel, they look and like, mm -mm. <laughs> I ain't even thinking about going up. And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people when the presence of God starts showing up strong in a service, they're ready for a vacation, or they're going to go somewhere else because sometimes, just sometimes, when God shows up, He might come knocking on their door. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't think a, a lot of them that will do that and shy away from the presence of God are very confident in their relationship with God. So those are things that need to be indicators to us. But we don't want to be those that draw back. We want to be those that run, run to Him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Exodus 40, verse 38. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, 
and fire was on it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. That's pretty good, ain't it? Cloud by day, fire by night. Now what was it on? It was on the tabernacle. What is the tabernacle? It's the temple, which we now are. So whether you can see it or not, I believe continually there is the glory cloud of God upon you Amen. in the day and the fire of God upon you by night to light you. And, and I believe that the things that God is doing, he, he has established it and made it to be so, whether we ever recognize it, whether we ever benefit from it, whether we ever acknowledge it and give him thanks or praise or understand why the cloud is there or why the fire is there. But I don't see God, since Jesus said he would never leave us or forsake us, I don't see him abandoning the tabernacle that all of those in the wilderness pointed to. Amen? So here we are now, the manifestation, the seed, children of God here on the face of the earth. And if God's going to protect a tent out in the middle of nowhere and make his appearance strong there, how much more for those that are birthed of his spirit, birthed of his word, and are the true representation of the tabernacle of God that's in the heavenlies. Amen? We, we really should take confidence in and I, I, I'm believing by the grace of God he's overhauling me every day. I need it. I'm about you. Yes. I need an upgrade. Just keep upgrading me, Lord. <laughs> the Lord's approval, when he was approving of things, boom, the fire would show up. In Leviticus 9, 24, 2 Chronicles 7, 1. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people, and there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat, which when all the people saw, they shouted and fell on their faces. Amen? The Lord showed up, made his appearance. Once again, children of Israel weren't ready for it. I mean, the Lord come down, consumed the, the offering that was offered up by the prophet, and boom, they hit the ground. In 2 Chronicles 7 1, now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven, consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Amen? Amen. So the fire of God, a lot of times, is an affirmation or confirming that God has given his approval. Amen. Uh, I think we can all ex say that we probably had that experience at some point when we would be ministering to people on behalf of the Lord and it's so hot. Yes. feels like your hands are burning off. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and the sweat's rolling and everything else. But I believe God is showing that approval. I think that it comes. Now you can't think that every time you get hot and start sweating, God's slinging his approval on you. But I do believe that by the grace of God, when you know, you know the mind of God, and you're doing the work of God by his spirit through the living word of God, and that fire shows up, be exceedingly happy. Yes. <laughs> be joyful, because you know it isn't you. It's him. Exactly right. Amen. Hallelujah. And I guarantee you, whether it needs consumed or illuminated, he'll do it, whatever it is, whatever it needs to be done. Amen. Also, God's nature, in Hebrews 12, 29, for our God is a consuming fire. It doesn't get any clearer than that if you want to look at the direction and 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 actual nature or revelation, our God is a consuming fire. <coughs> Thank God he's made us of that material now that cannot be consumed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Uh, also the word of God, Jeremiah 5, 14. Wherefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people wood, and it shall devour them. Amen? The word of God itself becomes a fire. And hopefully, one day, if I love it, I guess I'm going to say we'll get to it one day. But I need, I need to really do the, the revelation and the teaching on the, the, the new heaven and the new earth. Amen. Yes. Because there's such a delusion and such uh, misguided information out there about it when the Bible itself so clearly teaches exactly what he's talking about. Amen? But here, the word of God is like fire. He said, in your mouth, it'll be like fire. And uh, that's a good thing. When the Lord uh, gives you, if you're up against your enemy and the Lord says, hey, don't worry about it. I got this. Amen. I'm going to come upon you, going to put my words in your mouth. It's going to be like fire. And they're going to be like wood. Mm -hmm. Now we know what effect fire has on wood. Yes. Amen. Oh. It, it devours it up. Now we, we don't go and go through the neighborhood threatening. But I'm going to throw some fire on you. But, <laughs> but if the enemy thinks he's going to corner you. And, and all he's carrying is a little wooden stick to a firefight. So, he's going to lose. Amen. Amen. So don't be afraid of those that would bring railing accusations or anything else about you trying to tear your character down or trying to tear your your motive down or trying to tear your energy down. You stay in, in the place where the flame's burning. Stay in the presence of God. Continue yielding to Him and don't get in the flesh to where you think by some means you're going to gain the victory by having a soulish outrage. It's not going to work. Even if it's a pity for you, it's not going to work. Wait for the fire. The fire of God in you will devour your adversary, devour your enemy. And, and we need to get a visual on that. Because what you'll find out is if you're secure in your God and somebody's contending doctrinally against you, it don't get you out of the spirit. But you find someone who's insecure in their God or in what they believe, when they're challenged, they get angry, they get rage, or they're going to flee, or they just start ranting. It's, it's pretty chaotic. But in any case, trust the fire, trust the Word of God in you to be the fire that you need to put... I mean, if, if, you, were a, if you were wood and you seen consuming fire coming your way, you're not going to stand there and see if you can endure it. You're going to flee away. Your adversary understands that it is mere wood in the presence of a consuming fire. And that consuming fire being the one dwelling in you, the one speaking through you, and the one manifesting through you. So the Holy Ghost of God is that fire. The Word of God mingled with the the action and the energy of the Holy Ghost of God in you can consume the enemy because he's, he's already given us that word. But we need to see, get a pictorial on it that we understand if we can begin seeing it the way God sees it. God says, here's the way I see it. My word, not your word, but my word in your mouth is fire. And the ones coming against you is wood. Now that's the way God sees it. Now, we can start seeing it that way. It's kind of like, I don't think you want to come up here with that stuff. I think you want to back off with that stuff. Because when the consuming fire comes out, the enemy gets devoured. We do wrestle against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and heavenly places and the rulers of the darkness of this world. Amen? But when, when the enemy begins trying to approach your boundaries... Approach your gates. In other words, he's trying to get into your head. Or he's trying to get into your body. Or he's trying to get into other things. 
Let the truth of God, let that word and spirit manifest that fire of God to consume it. And it'll even, it'll even consume the thoughts and the imaginations that war against you. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jeremiah 29, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire. So be it. Amen. I don't know about you, but I have burned for years simply because there was so much in there to consume, I guess. But it's what is destructive to those that are of darkness and those who are in opposition of in walking in evil or wickedness. What will consume them and becomes a terror to them is working purity in you. It, it's working righteousness and, and cleansing the works of the hands and the intentions of the heart and, and the thoughts and the mind and everything else. All those things... The Spirit is in you doing that, confronting all of the stupid stuff we've consumed over the years. And he's saying, you know, it's, it's time to burn that stuff up. Amen. Amen. And we just say, okay, Lord, let it burn. Hallelujah. Well, I think we try to put it out quite often, but sometimes we just got to let it burn. Amen. Amen. His words in our heart as a burning fire in discipline and testing uh, also... Uh, in Malachi 3 3, 1 Peter 1 7, Revelation 1 14. But who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire. Amen. And like fuller so. He's the one, as we were just talking about, that burning that's taking place inside of us. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire might be found to praise and honor and glory. Amen? I don't know about you, but I have to keep submitting that stuff to him all the time. Lord, thank you that your spirit in me and your word in me is, is trying and putting test to test everything that's functioning and going on in my life and the things that are not beneficial to the kingdom, the things that are not making me a better man or a, a better minister or whatever, I want them consumed up. Amen. Amen. You just got to let it happen. I'll tell you what, it happens a lot quicker when you say, Lord, do me. <laughs> I love that, Clyde. Thanks for giving me that, man. I like that. Do me, Lord. Praise God. Revelation 1.14, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. How look. Man, how do you like to get stared down by that? It, it's good when you feel like you're trying to wade through darkness and you see that flame way off and you're drawn to the light of it and you get up and you realize, this is my Savior, this is my, my Master, this is my King, hallelujah. Instead of getting up there and somebody's waving a torch or something else, but running towards those eyes is, is pretty awesome. But the good thing about it is if you can get a pictorial of that, a visual in you, when it comes time, to make a choice of doing the right thing or the thing you're not sure of, those eyes will purify your decision. Mm. Oh, glory to God. They sure will. <laughs> They'll make that decision real quick for you and, and just say, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So kind of get in your mind, his head is, and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. It, it'll do you good when that decision time comes. Amen. Also, judgment, the fire of God, uh, the Holy Ghost of God, is like fire and judgment. In Leviticus 10, 1 and 2, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them as censer, put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Amen. If you'll remember when um, in the early church when they came to give their offering even and they lied to the Holy Ghost, they went down. You're talking about thinning some church buildings out. You, you let the appearance and the presence of God start showing up in the Holy Ghost in that type of a fire to where they say, well, we're going to take the tithe and the offering. Well, tithe is so much, offering so much. 
Is that is that what the Lord said to give? Yeah, that's what he said to give. Boom! You know, I mean, it, it could get wild. It could get crazy. Even in the early church, they separated themselves from the Christians at that time. They started thinning out because they were afraid. Amen? I, I think a lot of times... We get so caught up on the incredible, magnificent, wonderful, and measurable love that our Father has, and we don't realize there is that other side. As a matter of fact, he said, if you go without discipline, then you're a bastard child or an illegitimate child and not a real one anyway. So if we are, are pressing through and, and we are habitually doing and performing things that we know we shouldn't, then if we are not being disciplined by the Holy Ghost of God, then there's always that question that needs to arise, Lord, am I legitimately your child? You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying that everybody who's a child of God should go through that. I'm just saying that he has indicated very clearly that in his love, he will discipline you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. I started saying it's going to be a tough crowd for a Saturday morning. <laughs> there is, I, I'm going to tell you, you, you let a child go undisciplined, and not only are they an embarrassment and a shame to you, but it's bad for them. It's bad for them and bad for you. And, and basically, it, the, the scripture teaches that if you won't discipline your child, you hate them. Now, I believe our Father loves us. Yes. I think he loves us enough that if we need our hide tanned, <laughs> he'll do it. But he does it for our good. Yes. I think a lot of, sometimes, I don't say a lot, but some, sometimes our parents did it because they just got so frustrated. They knew we needed to be disciplined, and they didn't really whip us because it was the best thing for us. They whipped us because they were so frustrated because we were messing up so much. But our Heavenly Father always disciplines us to bring us to restoration, to bring us to healing, to bring us to health, to bring us to truth, to bring us to the place that He knows is going to, it's going to straighten our path so that we'll walk on a, on a more profitable and successful life in Him instead of one that's making us vulnerable by going down these little rabbit trails over here somewhere and the enemy may be laying in wait for us and, and wearing us out. So he keeps us in the place so we are less vulnerable to the things that the enemy might throw at us. In 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 1, then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And I don't know why that's so small. And Ahazi, Ahazi fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said to them, Go inquire of Baal's above. The God of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that you go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 4, Now therefore thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely die. And Elijah departed. Now to me, it sounds like God says, if you're having an issue, who do you want to take counsel from? Primarily, why would you go check over here with somebody or some other thing before you ever inquire of the Lord? Now, he was so upset that Ahaziah was doing it, call him Ahaz, whatever, but he said, you're not going to get better. You ain't going to make it. Now, he sent his prophet to tell him that. Now, we, we have to decide, I guess, to what degree and what level of relationship we want to have with the Lord. But he said, I want you to know I'm more than silver and gold and diamonds and, and, and all these other things. I'm, I'm more than just the sun and the sky and a good day uh, that I've made for you. He said, I'm here for you in everything. And, and if you're going to inquire 
and run off on these other paths before you ever seek me and seek my counsel, then he's saying, I, I don't think you know me. I don't think you appreciate me or understand me and what I bring to the table. I think probably one of the biggest revelations I got is that uh, some that I know very closely uh, and, and even some in the family, their, their major relationship is with me is what can I do for them? Yeah. What can I give them? And, and the things that they're asking for is the least thing that I have to offer. Yeah. Mm. Amen? Mm. It's the least thing. The, the greatest thing we have to offer is the Lord. Yes. We have the counsel of the Lord. We have the love of the Lord. We have mercy. We have grace. We have all these things that God has been building us up into to be and it seems like that those that we believe should know us and, and desire the most from us they, they're they attacking the least thing but they want as much of that least thing as they can get it's like give, 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 give but this is the least important thing, it's the least valuable we seek God a lot of times for finance and everything else, well finance is the least thing to worry about, I mean that, that's the least thing God's got. He's, all that stuff's going to be consumed anyway. I'm not, that, there's nothing in that. The thing that I want you to do is come to me for me. I know what you have need of. And, and I'll take care of that. Look at, the, look at the grass. Look at the flowers. Look at the trees. Look at the birds. Look at the fish in the sea. Look at the animals. They're not the, out there doing all these things, but their father knows what they have need of. And he has abundantly provided for them. We know he has because they're still here. Amen? Amen. He, he shows them and has taught them what they need to consume. And he provides it, yet they still go gather it. Amen? Amen. I, I don't see the Holy Ghost out here scraping up acorns and piling them up in a squirrel's nest. No. But I do see the trees producing acorns. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. You see, God's, God's got the provision there. Well, this is the same for us. He's put it out there, and he says, go get you some. You, you want joy? Get some. I've got plenty. You need peace. You need love. You need wisdom. You need guidance. You need counsel. Come and get some. I, I, I put it all out there for you, but I want you to gather it in. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's read on and see what happens here. Second Kings chapter 1 and verse 5. When the messengers turned back to Ahaziah unto him, he said unto them, Why are you now turned back? Basically he's saying, I sent you over to that godly gook. I sent you over to the false god to bring me some information. Am I going to make it or am I not going to make it? And they said, uh, they said to him, well, there came a man up to meet us and said unto us, Go turn again to the king that sent you and say to him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that you send to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely die. How do you like to deliver that message to the king? <laughs> And he said unto them, What manner of man was he which came up to meet you and told you these words? That's heavy duty right there. But in verse 8, they said, Well, he was a hairy man, <laughs> girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And Ahaziah said, It's Elijah. It's Elijah the Tishbite. He knew then that he had got the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, just as a note in this to understand, you know, that God is one who does discipline, that he does bring us to the point. He wants us to pass these, these tests. It's kind of like an education process. But he's saying, look, I want you 
to realize, I hear you. Amen. I hear you. I, I know what you have need of. Yes. And if you think there's anything going on in the world that I don't know about, <laughs> feel free to ask. Amen? Amen. Because I want to be the one that you come to. I want to be the one that you trust. That's what the Lord said, not Bill Hudson. The, the Lord said, I want you to come to me. Bring it to me. Let's counsel together over this. Let's reason together. Let me give you the truth, and then you can work it out from there. You will either believe me, or you won't believe me. Now, we would all think, oh, yeah, well, if I read counsel with the Lord, I'll believe him. Well, probably historically, the, the path is we, we may believe him probably 10% of the time overall. There's so many things that's still unperfected in Christianity, such as healing and, and, and the casting out demons and the other things, and, and, and even the multiplication of food. There's so many things that's unperfected that we're not sure what the outcome will be. And, and what it all comes down to is, do we believe what he said? Because when the disciples said, how come we can't do this? And he said, because of unbelief. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. Now I'm just trying to be real. It's okay to be real, ain't it? Yes. I think we're all in this thing together. Amen. We're we're all wanting to get to the arrive to the knowledge of the truth and, and to the operation, the administration of God in our life. So He's producing through us everything that He wants to produce through us. Amen. I want every time they run into Miss Teresa, they said that is not Teresa. Mm -hmm. Man, did you feel the presence of God? <laughs> When you got around, all I wanted to do was weep. There was just such an awesomeness. I was ashamed. Are you with me? That's that's what our father's looking for. Is that when they find us, that they either they are either moved by the intense presence of God, or they're angered because they're being confronted and convicted because of the own dark actions that's in their life. Amen. Shaking the dust off. Hallelujah. I, I'm telling you, there's a move of God that's taking place. And, and we better get on board with it. Yes. God's bringing us out of the place. We, we got a prophetic word uh, some time ago where he said, I'm going to put you on display. Mm -hmm. Well, he gonna, he's, he's preparing us now yes. to be on display. Then you're not going to get it by, by reading the same old stuff and doing the same old things. Because if that would have worked, you'd have been on display a long time ago. Amen. Amen. Same with me. But I'm telling you, he's shifting. The fire is going higher. Amen. It's getting God. hotter. Praise Amen. God. But you know what? With greater heat and greater fire comes greater light. Amen. Greater illumination and greater purity. A, a clearer understanding and a clearer mission. Hallelujah. He doesn't want us stumbling in the dark, and by the grace of God, we're not going to. Amen. 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 Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty, and went up to him, and behold, he sat on the top of a hill. I can just see Elijah sitting up there chewing on a weed or something, and see this captain of fifty and his fifty men coming up through there. Oh, we're going to get this tish by. They come up there and <coughs> uh, and behold he sat on top of the hill and he spake unto him thou man of God the king has said come down yeah I'm sure that went over real good Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50 if I be a man of God then let fire come down from heaven and consume you and the 50 with you and there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his 50 Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That kind of gets your attention. Yeah. It? Wow. Well, king ain't done again. King sent unto him another 50 with his 50. And he answered and said to him, O man of God, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah said, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty again. Hallelujah. It didn't matter if that had 50,000. 
that have hit the ground. You know what? You don't command God. No. You, you don't. Now, we, we, let's remember. We're talking about Elijah, the anointed one mm. yes. of that time. He was anointed by God as a prophet before the Lord to do the Lord's bidding, and he did it, and they're coming to inquire of him, not in a nice way. And he just went up and sat on the mountaintop. Why do you think he sat on the mountaintop? I'd say the Lord said, hey, get your butt over here and sit on the mountaintop. Yes. Or on the hill. Well, good news and bad news. Of course, those 50 bit. So he sent again. <laughs> a captain of a third 50 with his 50. And the third captain of 50 went up and guess what? He fell on his face. Hallelujah. Fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O oh, man of God, <laughs> I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servants be precious in thy sight. Now that's a whole different approach. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen. You see, that and, and that's the way we need to be. Yes, yes, we are the king's children. Yes, we're all these things. But I'm gonna tell you, there's that time where we need to know we need to humble ourselves. Amen. And we need to come low before our Father. Amen. Amen. No, we don't. We can't always run up and down the table kicking everything off, right? <laughs> Second Kings one fourteen. Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burned up the two cats. This is the guy still talking. Be, let let the life, my life and the life of these fifty be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burned up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties. <laughs> Therefore let my life now be precious in thy sight. And the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, I go on with him. Go down with him. Be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him to the king. Amen. Amen. The angel of the Lord was there the whole time. Yes. Amen. Now, who do you think Elijah was listening to? <laughs> he was listening to the Spirit of God. Now, I would think the average person who had just told the king, you're going to die, wouldn't go sit on a hill and stay seated when a captain of 50 and his 50 come up there after you. Unless he knew something. Yes. You see, he knew something. He wasn't afraid when, when probably one of them with their stuff could have just wiped him out but he knew he wasn't alone, and greater was the one that was with him Hallelujah. than all the others put together. Amen. So he wasn't afraid. He, he just sitting there, and, and he just simply said, well, if I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven. Mm -hmm. And it did. Because that's who he was. <laughs> and at the end, when the, when the angel of the Lord saw the man come humbly before him, and petition not only for his life but for the life of the others. He granted it. Yes, amen. Amen. It was still a captain of fifty, and it was still fifty. So the issue wasn't numbers at all. It was how he approached, and a lot of times it's how we approach. We we, we need to know. We need to have that same mindset, and, and we say it quite a bit, but let's say it again just for the heck of it, right? Elijah was not born again. Amen. You are born again yes. by the Spirit of God. Now, these guys pulled stuff off so incredible with the ability somehow of the mercy and the grace of God to subdue their fears and subdue their flesh so much because of the anointing of God on their life without even being born again. Yes. They were capable of doing incredible feats. It's, it, it makes me ashamed sometimes when I read what these guys and, and women were able to do. And it's like, wow, it's humbling. And if you if you have a problem getting on your face before the Lord, you just need to read a little bit more and, and take it to heart. Amen. <laughs> these people who weren't born again accomplishing incredible things because they knew their God. We need to know not only our God, we need to know our Father. 
Amen? Oh, I know they're the same one. But it's so easy to say God. Oh, yeah, I know God, but do you know your Father? Are, are you able to go into that consuming fire and not be afraid you're going to be consumed? Yeah. You, you see, we need to be able to approach him as he is and, and, and do it with, with honor, with respect, with, with care, with tenderness, with love, with mercy and grace. I guarantee you, every one of those things you pack in there, you'll be overrun with when you get there. Amen? Because what you bring to him, he's going to bless it and multiply it back to you. Fire is also a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Uh, did I already do that? No, we're looking at the New Testament. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that come after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen? The, the presence of the Holy Ghost, when he shows up, something's going to get fired up. Amen? One way or the other, either something's going to get consumed, something's going to get devoured, or something's going to get purified. Or something's going to get illuminated. Something's going to happen in a very positive way. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Fire consumes, of course, the wood, hay, and stubble. The Holy Spirit consumes the chaff in our lives, which is what we've been talking about. Amen? There's so many things that keeps us from approaching. I think one of the hardest things from Christians that I've counseled over the years, not naming any names, is just simply getting over where they've been. Get over what they've been through. Just get over. You, you, you just got to get over. You got to take it, lay it on the altar. You want, if you get if you can get beyond the outer court and get into that holy place where you understand and, and have that illumination of the Holy Ghost of God, right there is the altar of incense. Right there it is. That's, that's where you need to put that hurt. That's where you need to put the bitterness and everything else. Just, just offer it up to the Lord. Amen. Were you done wrong? Yes. Well, let it go. Just loose them and let them go. Well, how can I do that? Like I just said, get out of the flesh. Get out of the outer court. Get out of the, the fleshly, natural, carnal-minded realm. And get in there where, where the goods are. And as you lay that on the altar of incense, and you're offering up all that stuff that you have in, in the natural, every right to hold on to, but in the spirit you have absolutely no right to hold on to. As you place that on the altar of incense, just glance over here to your right a little bit and you're going to find the table of showbread. You're going to find the, the body and the wisdom and the word of the Lord on that table and just start consuming it. And all of the things where the hurt was, truth will come. Healing will come. you got to let it go though. Watch it. Put it, put it on that altar even if you just... In your mind, it doesn't matter if you go home, crawl in your bed, get in the floor, go out in the woods. It doesn't matter, but just get down, humble yourself before the Lord, get on your knees, lay on your face, say, Lord, I got some stuff I just got to offer up. Amen. I got to let it go. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, however long you've been packing it, it's been too long. Amen. You just got to let it go. It's holding you back. It's not holding them back at all. Hallelujah. It's holding you back. Get down there. Let that stuff go. And watch it go up in smoke. And I can tell you right where that smoke goes. It ascends right up before the throne. And God goes, ah, they let it go. How? Get down there and heal them. Get down there and refresh them. Get down there and renew them. Amen? We have to understand as priests, we have to we have to function this way. We have to. If we want to see 
anything near the results that Jesus got, we need to carry on the priesthood that Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Lay it on that altar. If you, if you don't know how to do it, we'll have a book and a CD out now. <laughs> I, just, I just told you how to do it. It doesn't have to be calm. There's no, no specific prayer. Just go in there and go, ah! Right. Amen. He knows. Just let it go. I, I can't do it no more, Lord. I can't carry this no more. You know what it is? It's about time. Yes. Give it up. Give it. Come on. Hallelujah. Give it to me. And that, that's what he wants to do. And, and that fire will consume it. It'll free you. It'll heal you. It'll liberate you. Hallelujah. It'll empower you. Refresh you. And, and you'll have a, a new light uh, and a way of seeing things that you haven't seen in a long, long time. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purged the blood of Jerusalem from her midst by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. A little clue. You get some action of that as God is wiping out the first so he can fully establish the second in the, the first nine, ten, eleven chapters plus of the book of Revelation. It's got nothing to do with us getting out of here. It's got to do with God dealing with what he said he was going to do with him. Amen. Then the Lord will create above every dwelling place. Woo, I just had a, had a hit from the Lord. <laughs> then the Lord will create above every dwelling place of Mount Zion and above her assemblies. I'm going to read that again. Because we, we covered it a while ago. But yeah. well, now we're getting it again. Then the Lord will create above every dwelling place of Mount Zion and above her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. Hallelujah. It's there. He's confirming again that we need to see ourselves as he sees us. Amen. We I think the best thing we might be able to do is go home and just bust our mirrors or, or at least take them off the wall and turn them around. <laughs> Amen? Put some of these scriptures up there. So when you look here, you might, in the natural, you're going to see maybe the back side of the mirror, but what you're actually going to see in the true mirror of the living Word of God is you're going to see in the morning, you're going to see that smoke over you. Praise that God. cloud. Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And that night when you're combing up, getting ready to go lay down or whatever and putting the jammies on, you look in that same mirror and you're going to see the fire just come up on you. Praise and you're going to hear the enemy busting through the walls getting out of there. Praise mm -hmm. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, at some point we got to know That's right. as we are known. We just got to. He, he openly declared everybody born of the Spirit is Spirit. And I know it's a, it's a jump. It's a jump for me. It's a gap that we have to press through and get across that threshold yes. till we start saying, well, what does the Spirit look like? Yes. Well, let's see what He says about it. Yes. Amen? He, he said, as He is, so are we. Well, there's a pretty good description of Him. Hallelujah. So I think if you, if, if, when we see Him, we'll know Him. Amen. Because we're just like Him. That's what the scripture tells us. So at some point, we, we have to start saying, are they afraid? Is the enemy really afraid of the Lord? You better believe yes. that. Yes. Well, he should be just afraid. Just as much afraid of you. Amen. And me. Amen. And if we believe that, we can take that walk down through the valley of the shadow of death if we have to. We can take that walk out into the prison camps if we need to. We can take that walk over into the face of our adversaries. We can make that walk up the steps to the king's house if we need to. We can meet his messengers in the field if we need to and say, just go tell him you're going to die. I'll be waiting up here on the hill when he sends us 50 of them. <laughs> oh, you're so awesome. 
For over all the glory will be covered. You're covered. Rose, you're covered, sweetheart. You're covered. Bobby, you're covered. We're covered yes. over all. Hallelujah. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. Glory to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 4 and 5 is what I just read to you. Let's look at the New Testament. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. Amen? When it, when it all comes down, what valuable thing that we treasure so much in our life would survive consuming fire? No. Kind of narrows it down, doesn't it? What, what do we have that would survive consuming fire? What does in your mind, what you know will survive the consuming fire, that's the precious thing. That's the holy thing. That's the goodly thing. Amen. Everything else is a tool. Everything else is servant. Everything else is expendable. But that that can stand the test of fire, that is the precious and the true and the valuable. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he'll suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Amen? I don't know about you, but fire can be your buddy. I don't want it to be my enemy. Amen? No. Now there's a natural fire and there's a spiritual fire. We're not talking about a natural fire. Well, if you look at even a natural fire, if it's tamed, if it's kept within the boundaries and it, it's guarded, it can be very useful. It, it, heat in this building. It, it can do all kinds of different things. You can cook on it. But if you let it get out of control, and it can burn houses up and take his lives. Yes. Well, the consuming fire that God is in us makes that stuff look like a joke. Yes. That's why when they were when Nebuchadnezzar and were trying to burn Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they couldn't do it because the fire that was on them was hotter than the fire they're trying to burn them with. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Fire purifies gold, silver, and precious stones as well. Amen? Well, we just read that, so I'm not going to put you through that one again. But the Holy Spirit takes us through testing that brings out the best in us. I mean, how do you know you can ride a bike till you get on a bike and you just shove off? I mean, you, talk, you, ever, you ever see people talk a good game, but when it comes right down to it, they couldn't do anything like they thought they could do. That's right. yeah. Well, our, our Heavenly Father, because of what He knows He's put in us, has expectations. And they're righteous and good expectations. And He knows that when if we'll go through the training process in Him by His Spirit, not by man's junk, but by the, by the work of the Holy Ghost of God and the living Word of God, then he knows that he's laying foundations in us that will stand any test. It's all on the rock. Amen? And we'll be able to endure, we'll be able to move through and accomplish and see the good of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen? Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit takes us through those tests. Uh, in 1 Peter 1, 7, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes. The, the, the whole thing is, is we need to be the one he wants us to be. 
We can't be that intellectually. We can only be that spiritually. Now, the spirit has intellect, but it's not carnal in nature. It's based upon the truth. And the mind of Christ that we have received is the one that is rooted in the truth and will not turn and, and will not go in any other direction other than to declare, thus saith the Lord. Amen? If, if God is God, he'll, he'll be God. That's the way the Spirit looks at it. But he knows the way that I take when he has tested me. I shall come forth as gold. Job 23.10. I don't even have a clue what time we got started. We passed time. Getting there. Hallelujah. Let's push through this one. Fire causes things to heat up. Isaiah 64. Verse 1 and 2. Come on, baby. All that you would rend the heavens. I can't tell you how many times I've prayed that prayer right there. That you would rend the heavens, that you would come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence as fire burns brushwood, as fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence. Amen. What, a, what a great thing to, to release to the Lord. I, I'm telling you, I have, there's been times I felt the whole ground shake around me, asking the Lord to just rend the heavens and come down. I'm going to tell you, there have been sometimes he's rent me because I wouldn't let him act like he wanted to be. But the, the thing is, is that when God's presence shows up, he heats things up. He, it, it's kind of like I was saying earlier, when you're solid and, and, and rooted in what you know God has taught you or you, what you do know and you know who taught you, then there's a fire in that. And it will heat up the ones that are lying against the truth or the ones who have misguided or been misled. They're wanting to defend intellectually, soulishly, something that they have been taught or believed, but there's no life in it and there's no spirit in it. So when you speak the truth, when you speak the truth, it heats them up. Amen. And they begin to boil. Praise God. And they can boil over. <laughs> and it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Just make sure that the intent isn't to see if they will boil over. You're just speaking the truth in love, hoping to recover a brother or sister who's caught in a snare to, to help them out. Mm -hmm. and, and God knows what the issue of the heart is when we do stuff like that. I can't tell you the number of times since I've been in the ministry that, that I've been confronted about things I believe, but I know where I learned them at. Amen? Amen. So you need to know where you learned it at. You, you can't say, well, Bill Hudson said, or Dr. Hudson said, or, or, or Clyde said, or, or Bobby, or Teresa, or and whoever else. It's got to be, I learned it from my father. Amen. The Holy Ghost of God taught me what I've got here. Now, if you, if you want to contend with it, you go right ahead. Yeah. I'm game. But if you're not sure, you need to become sure. Be sure. Amen. Be firmly convinced that what he said he would do and that he will perform. Fire illuminates the obscure and gives light to our path. In the daytime also he led them with a the cloud and all the night with a light of fire. Psalm 78, 14. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But it's written, eyes not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. <coughs> Unless the Spirit, it, 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 it wouldn't matter if Jesus is standing here teaching. That's right. If the Spirit in you does not hear what he's saying and make application into your life, it will just be head knowledge, intellectual. No change will come unless, there, after a while, what I have found out is the more people sit under truth and don't receive the truth and give themselves to the truth and take it to the, the Spirit and through the living Word, it begins to prick them, stick them, offend them. And at some point, they can't stay. I, I've watched it for years, over 30 years. I've seen people who really are putting on a great show that they're excited about the Lord 
And then when it comes down to it, after a while, they just can't handle because they're not hearing. They're not listening. But thank God we're here. Amen? Amen. I believe we are listening. I believe God is speaking in us. But whatever is revealed to you has to come by His Spirit. You'll find out there is a process the Spirit will take you through. And what I've also learned in my years is that the process can be different for everybody. But whatever it is for you, learn it. And become a worker together with Him. In that, if, if you learn sitting here, make sure you're sitting here. If the Spirit, this is where the Spirit does it, do it. If it's at home, if, if it's in your car, if it's out at the lake, or if it's in the woods, whatever it is, learn how you hear. Mm -hmm. and, and then whatever process the Spirit takes you through that, the first thing you have to do is hear. You can't believe nothing if you don't hear. Now, I think that's why the enemy does his best to keep people isolated and keep them away from, from the fellowship of believers is because they might hear something. Yeah. And you never know what you're going to hear. When, when he's speaking, it could be anything. There's stuff, when I minister a lot of times, I go home, I go, i got to write that down. I, I never heard him say that before. There's stuff we've said already today. Never heard him say before. But it's okay. I know where it's coming from. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, and I know why it's coming. Yes. And it's to, to heal, to help, to strengthen, yes. to empower, to inform, to enlighten, to bring us uh, what Jesus said in John 6, 63. The words I speak to you are spirit and life. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Let's stop right there. Father, I bless you. Thank you for the incredible opportunity that you've given me today to be in the midst of those who love you so much. Father, we open up for the things that we have heard. We know we started out saying we do want to hear well we have heard. And Father, we ask now to grace us in your mercy to take these things that we have heard and to let them now sink into our hearing. And we invite you, Holy Ghost of God, to establish us in the truth that is present with us. And Holy Ghost of God, if there's any wood, hay, stubble, anything in our lives that would hinder us from receiving this truth or establishing us in this truth, we ask that in your mercy and grace to consume those things that are consumable so the things that cannot be consumed can remain. We bless you, Lord, and thank you that in all things we know your love is true. We know that you are in us, that we are yours, and you are ours, and we are one together. We adore you and bless you for all things in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah.